Um, lots and lots of people are not religious themselves, but they've got a vague idea it's a good thing that other people are. It's very patronising and condescending, by the way. It's sort of mm. the attitude, well, you and I, of course, are too intelligent to be religious, but the common people need it. Um, and there are a lot of people who actually think that. A lot of people think that we need religion in order to be moral. Mm. They, they, mm. There are a lot of people who think that if you took religion away, people would start, you know, hmm. r- rushing around, smashing shop windows and robbing and raping and things like that. Huh. No evidence for that, whatever. No evidence. N- absolutely no. none. No. So I think one important thing we've got to do is to prize apart religion from morality. It's absolute mm. nonsense to say that you need religion in order to be moral. And so I think that would be one major step we could we could take. You mm, don't okay. need to send okay. your child to a faith school no. in order to instill in that child faith. a sense of morality, a sense of good citizenship. Okay. Sure. For whatever reason, mm. even in a secular country like this, mm-hmm. we have arrived at a point where there's a sort of latent belief within the popular consciousness that to be scientific is to somehow be sort of desiccated and dry mm. and uh, mm-hmm. to miss out on the magic and mystery of mm-hmm. one's experiences and the, the world and so on. You dispute that, right? So Not only dispute it, I mean, it's just the exact opposite of the truth. Oh. Science is wonderful. Science is amazing. Science is wonderful and amazing. The, the fact that you could understand why you exist, who could uh-huh. not be turned on, who could not be excited by that, yeah, who would ever right, want right. to live in a world who would where want? you live your life, yeah. you go to work, mm-hmm. you go to the office, whatever it is, you go to the football match, and this goes on year after year, and sure. then you die. And you don't have any understanding of why you were there in the first place Uh that's desiccated that's dry what is not dry and desiccated is coming into the world as it were awakening in the in the world Ah. and awakening in the fullest sense Mm -hmm. of of seeing the universe seeing the stars seeing down a Mm -hmm. microscope Mm -hmm. you know who the ultimate scientist is uh god uh yeah so here we go uh (laughs) here we go here we go (laughs) (laughs) yes yes here we go who essentially invented science? Uh, God, yeah, yeah. So interesting, mm-hmm. isn't it? Though it is interesting. It's interesting. Yeah. It's also interesting what Richard Dawkins just recently said uh, about Christianity. Still an atheist, but listen to this. I do think that we we are culturally a Christian country. I'm, I call myself a cultural Christian. I'm, I'm not a believer. But there's a distinction between ah. being a believing Christian and being a cultural Christian. And so, you know, I, I love what hymns and Christmas carols. I love hymns. And, Christian, um, Christmas carols. I, I, I sort of feel at, uh-huh. home at home in the Christian ethos. If I had to choose oh, between Christianity weird. and Islam, I choose Christianity every single time. Huh. I mean, it seems to me to be a, a <laughs> fundamentally either. decent religion oh. um, in a way that I think oh. Islam is not. Oh, wow. I think you're going to have to explain why you say that. Professor Dawkins, why is Islam profound, well, the, the pro- way, the fundamentally way that, not decent mm. like Christianity? Yes, I mean, the, the, mm-hmm. the, the, the way women are treated, I mean, Christianity is not me. great about that. For, uh, okay. It's had its problems sure. with female vicars and female bishops and things. Uh-huh. But there's an active but. hostility to women, which is promoted, I think, by the huh. holy books of Islam. Uh-huh. I'm not talking about individual Muslims, who, of course, are quite, quite different. But the, but the doctrines yeah. of Islam, the Hadith mm-hmm. and the and the Quran, uh-huh. is fundamentally um, hostile uh-huh. to women, hostile to gays, uh-huh. um, and uh, uh, I yes. find uh-huh. that I Hello. like to live in a culturally Christian country, although I do not believe a single <laughs> word of the Christian <laughs> faith. I mean, that's interesting, isn't it? That's a, that seems like a shift in his. It sure does. In in his ethos, if you will. Well, since that last interview, right, in 2011. Yeah, yeah. Uh, where he wanted of, nothing to do with any of Many it. of the things, if if that were true, that you'd see all of this violence going on. And, yeah. Uh, look right. around, Dick. Yeah. Uh, uh-huh. I'm sorry, Richard. Richard. Dick. <laughs> whatever. Uh, they're both accurate. But I will say, cultural Christianity from... Richard Dawkins, pretty interesting. You know why? Because he has seen the decay of society yes, and civilization. Exactly. That's why. Exactly. He sees our very civilization crumbling around us and what keeps it together. And he's seen, huh. you want to talk about changing of the mm. ethos. Yeah. Uh, uh, he's probably living in London or at least in the UK. Mm-hmm. Uh, that ethos has tra- changed dramatically. Sure has. 
sure uh, has. with uh, Islam leading the way. Yep. And uh, yep. how's that ethos working out? Well, he sees what happens when you ignore that ethos and you allow the the culture and the society to just accept whatever uh, and the values of the people coming in and you don't do anything about it. Right. And they start to change your values and your foundation. And once you've built your foundation on those principles and then people start taking a jackhammer to it, something bad is going to happen and he understands that now. Yep. Apparently, there, there's really no denying it anymore, is there? I mean, you can't deny it. Look what's happened since we've shunned Christi- Christian values. Yeah. I mean, you start with really, uh, and things started going haywire a little bit before this to a certain extent. But once we stopped prayer in schools yep. and you couldn't pray anymore in school and you couldn't talk about it in school and you had to avoid all references and we started to get this separation church between state. church, church and, and state, state. Yeah. nonsense that doesn't exist in the U.S. Constitution. There is no such phrase in the Constitution. But that became our battle cry. Separation of church and state. You can't even talk about it. <laughs> What's happened to us since then? Are we better, worse, or about the same? As your optometrist might ask. <laughs> about now, better? Better? Worse? Or about the same? Well, we know. It's far worse, and it's getting worse every minute of every day. 